and welcome. It's so wonderful to be engaging today with colleagues as we continue to learn new best practices in the virtual environment. Today, our focus will be on higher education and how to engage with pre-service teachers via technology. We have been using Flipgrid in our classes. This is a platform that we're both familiar with and we have used with our current students to support their uh, virtual classroom culture. We're excited to teach you and learn with you today um, as we go over some of the basics um, and how we've used it. During our presentation today, we'll talk to you guys a little bit about who we are and how we've used Flipgrid in our own classes at Slippery Rock. We'll go over the basics of Flipgrid, talk about student engagement, share a little bit of, from student feedback, and talk about how students, pre-service teachers, can use Flipgrid in their own instructional practices. My name is Amanda Young and I'm an assistant professor of adapted physical activity at Slippery Rock University in Western Pennsylvania. I'm currently the APA minor coordinator where we have students from all majors participate. I also teach our intro to APA class to our school wellness education students who will be physical and health educators in the state of Pennsylvania. I also teach graduate courses for our APA master's students. My name is Jessica Hallworth and I am an assistant professor in the special education department also at Slippery Rock University. I mainly teach pre-service undergraduate students who will be special education and elementary education teachers after graduation. My current classes hone in on early intervention practices, instructional practices for individuals with extensive needs, and supervising students in the field. I also teach a few classes in the graduate program and doctoral program. In the doctoral program, I support students in dissertation seminar. If you're new to Flipgrid, we'll show you how to use it. Flipgrid can be used on a web browser or a downloadable app. It's really great for asynchronous modality of teaching so that students can watch videos and create videos on their own time when it's convenient for them. We really love that there's restricted access based on our classroom codes. So students do not have to create a new account. They can log in with their SRU credentials and access our Flipgrid codes. It's also Gen Z approved. It's basically like social media for the education world. Students with disabilities can also benefit from using Flipgrid with different modifications and accommodations. For example, I had a student in one of my classes who had a visual impairment. It was so much easier for him to be a part of our conversations by recording a video and talking rather than typing up a discussion post and reading everyone else's posts on the discussion board. I will now take you through Flipgrid. There's two options, educator login and an educator sign up. You are going to complete the educator login um, or the sign up if it's your first time. So once you're in here, you're going to see that you have discussions and groups. Uh, these are all the different groups that I've created for different classes um, and professional development. You'll see that you can make them active, hidden, you can share them in a number of different ways. And there's a couple different actions you can do. You can add people, you can put it into teams, you can export the data. If you create a group, you can make it either private or public. It has a name, a code, and students. Make sure that they're joining with their email, whether it's their Google school email or Microsoft email. This will keep it private. Now you can see when I go into one of my classes, uh, this is what it's kind of looking like. And there's going to be some topics that I've created. So these are two that I've had responses for for my classes. Uh, one, we had a uh, reflection based on a presentation in our classroom. So you can see I was able to write my prompts and then the students responded to it. I love that it shows how many views the, um, students have gotten and it goes directly to their videos. So it would play. Um, you can give feedback. There's closed captions um, and I can record there right back. Students also can record back. Again, all of my different discussions and Flipgrid has so many different other options that you can use um, that they just keep inventing and bringing out, um, which is really great. There's a mixtapes option now where you can add tons of different videos. You can also do a short video to record um, like a video that you'd like to share with your class. So again, you can see all the different topics that I've created and you can also copy and paste them so you don't have to create new ones. 
you will say hello to Flipgrid a little bit later. We recommend taking out your phone and saving this guide for future use. It's the Educator's Guide to Flipgrid, and we did not develop it, but um, a couple individuals did, and it's phenomenal. It goes over every single detail that you could think of as um, that included in Flipgrid, and it has pictures and step-by-step -step guides. Um, it's a wonderful thing that you could just kind of tuck away um, for when you are ready to create your own Flipgrid for your classroom. One of the most challenging things that we've had to deal with in this transition to online learning is student engagement. In this section, we'll talk a little bit more about how we get our students to engage in our classes, even though we are virtual. If you're like me, I like to have a solid foundation in understanding of, is this really worth my time to use it in the classroom? And there is a, lot, a good bit of research that's starting to come out with Flipgrid um, now that we've kind of moved to this online modality um, and some different effects on the classroom. So in a couple different studies, I'm going to tell you about the research that it's um, is suggesting that this is a really positive tool to use. Um, so in one class of 50 students, um, at the end they used it and 6% of students said that after the implementation their communication decreased. Uh, so just one or two students, about 68% of them though said that their engagement increased during and after the implementation of Flipgrid. Um, and then about 26% 26% of the students said their communication stayed the same. Um, so maybe they were really good at communication already, but I think 68% of engagement is incredible. Um, and I know at a time where, you know, my communication and engagement is really lacking, those are really big numbers. Um, another survey, this was about uh, 25 students, but um, of the students that were surveyed, 92% of them said, and reported that their Flipgrid increased connectedness to their course, the peers, the instructor, and the, and the program, um, while 8% of them reported being a little unsure. So um, there is this basis falling that the research is suggesting that this is a great engagement tool. Now that you know a little bit about Flipgrid and how it's used, I'm going to show you some ways that we've aligned it to our coursework. Um, so here's some examples. We have discussions and reflections, which I did show you when we were going through. Um, I've posed a question and I've let students respond and talk about and discuss the content. I love that it's not just typing, although the students can type um, on their flip grids. I love that they're actually talking about it and thinking about it and having to talk about it um, rather than just typing. I think it, it's a different way of learning um, and reflecting. I also really like that students can respond to other peers and give them a really thoughtful um, response. I can also do the same. Um, engagement, this has really helped students stay connected with their peers. Um, we've also done it with just some social prompts. Um, I know Amanda has specifically done this in her class um, when we switched from a face-to-face -face to an online modality in the spring. Um, and she just said, like, show me your space that you're now using um, as your study space. Um, so that way it just kind of got students thinking about something else and they were able just to connect with their peers in a different way. Um, and another way would be presentations. Um, they can, students can present information to their peers in a totally different and creative way. Um, and again, allowing that option for students to respond and ask questions and make a discussion out of it. There's nothing like actually being able to see your students' faces um, when they're discussing and reflecting and providing information to students. Um, you're really able to get to know them um, even from afar. Here's an example of a topic that Jess created for one of her classes after she had a PT come and present to the class. The students recorded reflections of the presentation. I just finished watching uh, The Rising Phoenix and I am in shock and I'm mostly in shock with myself. Uh, this was the first time that I saw Paralympic athletes in their respective sport doing what they do and i loved it i
quarantine and my mom is sleeping on the deck. Week two of school online and Simba got a new toy. Oh, okay. Oh, now he wants to play with the box. I got a new setup. Yep, 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 I did. Student tip, use your TVs as a second screen. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. My brother and I have been having a Nerf gun war in the house like children knocking down targets. All for now. See you next week. Hi, everybody. My name is Danny Rackanu, and I am a transfer student from uh, CCAC, which is a community college back in Pittsburgh, where I'm from. Um, I transferred up here about three years ago and switched my major from nursing to now early childhood special ed. Uh, the reason doing so is I work at a summer camp during the summer and for kids with disabilities, and I absolutely fell in love with it. So here I am today, three years later, getting my bachelor's degree and now picking up a minor in APA. Um, I'm excited to see opportunities ahead and the challenges awaiting, and I'm just ready to take on this semester with everyone else. Uh, thank you. Two things that I learned from the physical therapy and early intervention presentation was that families are super involved, especially during this time with COVID-19. There's a lot that is expected of parents um, when it comes to the exercises to do at home. There is definitely more involvement with the parents than what I would have anticipated. Also, um, the therapy is very individualized and I thought it was really cool to know that depending on what the child prefers, um, that's what the type of exercises are going to be based off of. So there might be an exercise that my child doesn't really like and doesn't respond too well and they don't have to do it. There's other options, which I thought was very cool. And as a future educator, I just became more appreciative of all that the PTs do um, in early intervention. It can definitely be difficult to meet the needs of not only the child, but get the families on the same page and make sure you're supporting the entire family. So I thought it was nice how she brought up that there is a negative side and you know, that's okay. That's part of the job, but it's the reality of it. So I really appreciated her honesty. And overall, I would give the presentation five stars. I thought that it was helpful. And I feel like I learned a lot of knowledge that previously I hadn't really known much about at all. Hi, everybody. My name is Erin McKay, and I'm a sophomore here at Slippery Rock. My major is early childhood education and special education. And I just added the special education, so I'm really excited about that. I am from Pittsburgh, PA, and I went to Keystone Oaks High School. I don't know if anyone knows where that is. <laughs> um, right now, I'm living off campus at the Grove, and I love my apartment a lot. <laughs> so, And something I like to do in my spare time, I like to read, write, and I really enjoy dancing. I'm also living here at the Grove and love my apartment. And that's very exciting that you just added special ed to your major. So as we know, obesity um, is a major health concern. And for individuals with ID, it can be even greater. So in previous studies, they found that adults with severe profound ID actually have lower rates of obesity than adults with mild or moderate ID, which is interesting to me. But that's why they said we need to look at the lifestyle behaviors of these individuals. So this study looks at individuals 16 and older um, who are in that transition phase of life. So they found three main themes, and that was situatedness, which refers to the culture at school and at home, um, motivation, which is self-efficacy and connectedness, as well as the wider environmental influences. And so that includes the weather, um, availability, and price. So at school, physical activity and physical education, having a routine was super key, as well as just having a routine for scheduling to eat. Um, the lifestyle, the parents often acted as a barrier. It can be a facilitator as well, but it was most often found as a barrier. And when individuals lack skills, they don't feel confident and they don't want to participate, but they also love that team and competitive spirit that goes along with physical activity. 
Um, they found that PE is so important because it may be the only source of physical activity they're getting and it is structured um, and social relatedness with the teacher is so important because when that's lacking, it can lead to a lot of just negative things overall. Overall, school structure, high self-efficacy, and social connectedness facilitated PA in a healthier diet. Hi, Caitlin. I liked how you talked about the lifestyles of parents and how they might be facilitators or barriers. And I can see that because many of the participants relied on their parents for physical activity and diet outside of school. And it turned out that the only place they were receiving somewhat of a diet or physical activity structured plan was during school. And at that, some of the participation in sports they didn't enjoy, or they did, maybe. So that could have a factor in it as well. Also, other barriers were living locations and means to get around, which that doesn't help anybody if you're unable to do any of those. And, but one thing I found worth noting was the parents who did live a healthier lifestyle, it did rub off on their children and their children were more physically active and they were, um, they had a better, healthier diet as well. We all know the importance of social and emotional wellness, especially during a pandemic. So I use Flipgrid as a wellness check. I post questions to my students and let them check in just to see how they're doing. So I might ask questions like, how are you? What's going well this semester? What are some challenges? Name one highlight of your week. I always wanna make sure that I come back to the positive because especially during this time, it's really easy for our students to be down. So this is a great way to check in and see how they are. Hey guys, we did it. This is our last Flipgrid last week. Um, it's been fun. Some highs and lows of the semester. Some lows were the social distancing. Not a fan of that. Online classes. Not really a fan of that. I feel like I learned more in the classroom, being around the teachers and students. And some of the highs were being in class. The activity days. I feel like I learned a lot of different physical activities I can teach. Different age groups. Um... It was definitely a fun semester. Loved the class. Um, wish we could still be in class. Some of the stuff I'm looking forward to in the summer is stuff opening back up, hanging out with friends, swimming, having fun, parties, uh, just being able to see people, going out, get foods, you know, etc. Stuff like that. Um, it's definitely been fun. Can't wait to see all the students, all my friends, teachers again next semester. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Hey everybody, I just figured out that you can use cool effects when you make these videos, so that's fun. <laughs> but I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I have been very stressed and busy this semester, which I'm sure most of you can relate to. But on the positive side, we're in week 10. Um, the Steelers are 5-0. And we only have 24 school days left, I think, in the semester. But, yeah, so I've been working and obviously doing homework all the time. Um, I've been working to take extra time to relax, though. So my advice for all of you guys is that no matter how much homework you have, it's important that you do take time to relax or do something that you enjoy. So I hope you guys have a great couple weeks ahead, and I'll see you in class. Peer connections and engagement looks very different in our online modalities. Flipgrid gives students a way to be able to stay connected with their peers. Instead of seeing each other on campus, in the hallways, now they can see each other on Flipgrid. In this example, we used Flipgrid to stay connected. So my students recorded some kind of cooking show to talk about something healthy that they were making or eating while they were at home. What's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm going to be teaching my girlfriend here today um, how to make one of my banana and strawberry smoothies. So the first thing I do is I cut up the strawberries. So next up, I cut up the banana. See, we already have one that I had and just cut up all the strawberries. 
So next up, I just pour in all the ice, the yogurt, using the whole thing here. Alright, and there you have it, the uh, healthy strawberry and banana smoothie. Flipgrid has its own way of using grading rubrics or scoring and comments that you can provide to your students. One way that you can use Flipgrid for assignments or assessments would be to give them a participation grade, so your Flipgrid can count as their daily participation. One of my favorite aspects about Flipgrid is that it is so easy to grade, um, especially with a double screen. I'm able to have the Flipgrids up on one and then our grading platform on my other screen, and I'm able to quickly go through all of the different um, discussions that the students have posed and I can easily grade and respond there um, without having to go back and forth. Um, it just makes it really easy. Another great feature of Flipgrid is that I've, we've actually learned how to embed this into our platform. Um, so we use uh, Desire to Learn as our uh, platform for all of our courses and you can actually go in and add a tab for it and when you click on it, it takes you directly to Flipgrid rather than having to give students a you know, special code where they have to refer back to it in their email or something like that. It makes it really accessible with that shortcut link. There are so many different ways that you can use Flipgrid. You can use it for introductions, you can send out newsletters, you can collaborate with people, you can encourage students, they can share stories, you can have a debate. Don't recreate the wheel because there are so many people out there who are using Flipgrid right now. I would recommend following Flipgrid on social media so you can see how other people are using it. Recently, our national consortium used Flipgrid to record questions for a Twitter chat. Shout out to Dr. Bittner for pulling that all together. If you wanna see more of what we did with it, check out Twitter with the hashtag APE Chatter. Now we're gonna throw the question back to you. How do you think you can use Flipgrid in your own classes? We've been using Flipgrid for about two semesters now, and this is what our students think. Student feedback has been a really important process uh, that we've taken into consideration uh, just because we really want to know what our students think about Flipgrid and if it's worth using in our classes. Um, so there are positive and negatives to Flipgrid. Some students really like it and some do not. Um, I was really surprised by some of my students who actually spoke up more on Flipgrid compared to the in-person classes, but then there were students who actually spoke less um, in compar you know, comparison to the in-person classes. So it is really nice for those students who you might not always hear from. Um, I know when I'm in a Zoom lecture or something like that, I might only hear from five of my students, whereas on Flipgrid, each one of them is participating and I'm able to see them um, and hear from them. Some students don't want to be on camera, and that is okay because they don't have to be on Flipgrid. Um, they can actually just upload pictures. Um, they can use different backgrounds, even PowerPoint presentations that they can upload, um, and they can just voice record. So it allows them to be in a comfortable space, um, not always on um, recording um, themselves, but they can just audio record and put their thoughts out there. One of our mutual students at SRU, Akila, shared some feedback with us. She said Flipgrid was a great balance between work and play, thinking about social engagement. It allowed us to participate in topics with our own personal touch. I enjoyed that it was flexible and uninterrupted. I learned a lot about my classmates and professor that I would have never gotten the opportunity to know if we were in the classroom. Not only can you use Flipgrid in your own classes, but you can share with your students how they can use it when they go out into the field. 
Not only can we use Flipgrid as a tool in higher education, but our pre-service teachers can use what they've learned in our classes and see how they can implement it into classes of their own. Flipgrid can be used to view student progress. Maybe you have students submit videos over time so we can see the progression of skills. Maybe families can submit videos to share what they're doing for recreation, how they're staying active outside, and promote lifetime physical activity. Maybe our secondary students could use Flipgrid for self-assessment. So when they record a video of themselves doing a skill, maybe we're gonna provide a checklist and they can see what they're doing correctly and what they still need to be working on. In the same way that we use Flipgrid to create classroom community, school-age students can also use Flipgrid. Lastly, we would love for you to check it out and try it. So you can actually pull up your phone right now and take a picture of the QR code and it's going to take you to a Flipgrid specifically for this conference. Um, and we'd love for you after the presentation to record one of yourself um, and kind of get a feel for it without ever creating an account or anything like that. So that way you can try it for yourself and see if it's something that you would like to use in your classes, um, in your professional organizations, and so forth. So I hope you're able to meet others at the conference this way. Um, it's just a really fun way to engage. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you found something helpful, something useful, so that you might be able to use Flipgrid in your own classes. If you guys have any questions or if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to chat. You can email Jess or myself, and I hope you enjoy the conference. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.